Hello everyone, my name is Devashish and I welcome you all to this video. So in today's video, we are going to discuss about API hooking. So to be very precise, I'll be discussing about inline API hooking. So the reason why I chose to, you know, uh, cover this video in this particular series is, you know, lot of antivirus companies when they are actually interviewed interview candidates they usually ask a question related to hooking because you know a lot of antivirus software uh, not a lot actually almost all of the antivirus software actually use this technique uh, in their product to kind of you know catch several uh, threats uh, so uh, what is it then uh, so inline hooking is a method of intercepting calls to target function which is mainly used by antiviruses sandboxes and malware so the general idea is to redirect a function to our own so that we can perform processing before and or after the function does it. This could include checking parameter, you know, uh, logging something, logging some API arguments, spoofing the return values, etc, etc. So rootkits tend to use this kind of hook to kind of modify data returned from system calls in order to hide their presence. Security softwares like you know antivirus and you know different uh, intrusion prevention system also does this to prevent you know uh, to prevent threats or you know monitor potential malicious uh, activities within the system. So uh, the basically the hooks are placed by directly you know modifying code uh, within the target function. Uh, so the reason why we call it you know inline modification usually this is done by overwriting the first few bytes with a jump instruction uh, the jump we actually use here is uh, you know known as uh, unconditional jump uh, this allows execution to be redirected before the function does any processing so most hooking engine uses a 32 bit relative jump uh, the op code for it is you know um, hex e9 which takes up to five bytes of space. So, so how it works? So let's say you have a uh, process running here on your system. And this is the memory map of that uh, process. Uh, let's say it is notepad.exe. And in this process, there is a DLL loaded, user 32.dll. And this is where the function message box. A starts, you know, this is where the uh, this is the entry point of the message box A and you want to hook message box A. So uh, to be able to hook this function uh, in user mode, uh, this is uh, how usually it is done. So basically an external process, which is, you know, maybe the antivirus antivirus software or the ips actually it it injects a dll into the process okay it injects a dll into the process let's say the injected dll okay the which is known as you know uh, maybe av.dll your antivirus.dll is loaded here okay now uh, when this dll is injected the dll main of this function right what it does is it actually Mm, replace the first you know five bytes of this particular function message box a with a with an un unconditional jump jump and jump instruction usually look like this it will start with jmp and followed by the address where it has to land so the what is what will be the address of this particular uh, jump this function is going to jump here which is your hooking function okay ab.dll and ev.dll will have a uh, function which actually you know handles this call let's say message box handler dot a message box handle okay so this message box a when anyone actually calls message box a so the control flow will come here and instead of executing the real instruction, it will actually execute this jump instruction. So the jump instruction will now get redirected, redirect the control flow here. So now the code of message box handle, handler will be executed, which is actually the, which is your, the, the code of your antivirus, uh, antivirus software or, you know, any rootkit or whatever it is, the hooking function basically. So now in this function, what you can do, you can, you know, add several checks. For example, if you want to check whether, you know, a certain argument is passed, argument checking, 
argument checking logging etc etc you know if you want to log all the calls that were made to message box you can log argument checking you know if you want to spoof some argument maybe you know a message box was called with title abc uh, you can actually by hooking this function you can replace it to xyz or something like that so all these things you can do so this is actually you know basic user mode inline hooking so this is also possible in kernel land but this is not actually done by injecting some dll but you know whatever antivirus software you know uh, that does or perform user mode hooking right it actually uh, does that by injecting a dll and by replacing uh, the first few bytes of the function uh, the hooking fun uh, the hooked function to jump instruction and once this is done once this particular uh, you know whatever you wanted to do with this particular message box call is done right then actually you know it redirects you back to the original function so that it doesn't break the functionality of that actual function so this is actually you know the basic idea of uh, the inline hook so now we are going to you know also talk about a very uh, simple concept which is also known as trampoline so i have found a really nice image uh, from uh, on google uh, that actually explains the concept of trampoline really well so here also they are taking example of you know message box a and uh, what it does is you know uh, as you can see instead of you know uh, overwriting the first uh, few bytes of the hooked function right we are actually saving those instruction into a trampoline and followed by that what you can see there is a jump instruction and jump message box a so basically it is jumping into the actual function only which is hooked function however it is actually you know jumping to the message box a address plus 5 which means instead of jumping into the first instruction we are actually jumping to the next instruction okay so it is when someone calls actually uh, the message box a uh, message box function it will execute all this instruction and after that it will jump to message box a and it will skip the first jump that we have replaced our that is actually replaced by our dll and it will start executing that so it actually allows us to you know bypass this hooks as well whenever it is not required we will actually you know call our trampoline so that actually it doesn't have any impact the hook doesn't have any impact so uh, when actually you hook any function in certain manner right you have basically you can call the actual function uh, with hook and without hook so when you are actually implemented uh, with a trampoline uh, it actually you know provides you just one more uh, one more flexibility to you know call the function with hook and without hook without breaking the functionality so that's the simple concept of trampoline so uh, that's all i wanted to discuss in today's video i hope i was able to make some concepts clear about in inline hooking so uh, if you uh, like the kind of content i upload on this channel i uh, request you to you know consider subscribing to this channel as well so thank you so much for your time i'll see you in the next video bye bye